in our uh, previous section we have done uh, the configuration regarding the uh, MPLS VPN right so now but uh, the thing is uh, that the main thing we uh, forgot to configure is the MPLS we config uh, we configured uh, everything related to OSPF uh, the MPPGP the VRFs but we forgot to configure the MPLS but uh, not a, not an issue let's uh, do the configuration related to MPLS as well I think uh, MPLS is one of the uh, concept which require minimum configuration so let's start uh, doing the MPLS related configuration also so let's start with the PE1 so at PE1 let me So I'm at PE1 now. So what are the interfaces which are connected into the MPLS for PE1 is serial 3 by 0 and serial 3 by 2. So first of all, what I will do is I will run this command MPLS IP. So now MPLS is enabled, right? The second thing, uh, oh, I'm, uh, I'm on the route reflector, sorry. No problem. So I'm on the route reflector. So the first command that I run is MPLS IP. So uh, what we will do is for the label distribution, uh, what we will uh, try is we will set the range of the uh, MPLS label that a particular router can generate. So for example, we are at R2. So we will give one range of uh, labels to R2 that is uh, from 200 to 299. Similarly to R3, we will assign a range uh, starting with the 300 and ends with 399 so that we do not uh, need to check uh, which router generated this label. That will be easy to identify, right? If there is any, any label which starts with the uh, 2, that, will be, that label will be generated by R2. And if there is any label that uh, in the range starting with the 300, then it will be generated by R3. And similarly, if there is any label, which starts with nine. So by just looking at uh, that particular label, we will be uh, under, we will be able to uh, find out that what is the, uh, which router originates, uh, originated this particular label, right? So I am at R2 or I'm at the route reflector. So what I can set, uh, to set the label range, what we can do is I can give this command MPLS label range. And because this is R2, we'll say, uh, the range we will decide is from 200 to 299 okay and what are the interfaces uh, which are into MPLS for R2 that is serial 3 by 0 and serial 3 by 1 right so I will go to interface serial 3 by 0 and uh, second one is 3 by 1 okay so there is only one command that we need to configure that is the MPLS IP Second interface is three by one. The command that I, that I need to configure is MPLS IP. That's it. Now let's move to PE or you can say let's move to PE1 and the interfaces which are into the MPLS backbone for <clears throat> PE1 that is a three by zero and three by two. So let's go to our provider edge router one MPLS IP and uh, the MPLS label range that we want to define for PE1 because it is router one. So we'll uh, give it a range start, uh, starting from uh, 100 to 199, right? So any label uh, which will be in the hundreds range or which, which will be uh, in the range of 100 to 199, we can identify that uh, this is the label which is generated by PE1 or router one. So the interfaces which are into MPLS for P1 is three by zero interface serial three by zero. Command to enable MPLS is MPLS IP. And the second interface is three by two. We just need to give this command MPLS IP. That's it. Now let's go to R3. Uh, the R3 interfaces which are into MPLS is 3 by 1 and 4 by 4. So R3 
TLS IP and TLS label range for R3 will be 300 to 399. Interface serial plus do it like this. So for R3, it's 3 by 1 and 4 by 4. 3 by 1 MPLS IP and the second interface is uh, 4 by 4. Serial 4 by 4 MPLS IP. So MPLS LDP neighbor. See the neighborship is up. Okay, so now let's move to uh, R4. The R4 interfaces are 3 by 2 and 3 by 3. Uh, MPLS IP, MPLS label range will be from 400 to 499. Interface serial 3 by 2 MPLS IP. Sorry, MPLS IP and 3 by 3 MPLS IP. So configuration is completed on uh, PE2 as well. Now let's do the same for R9. R9, R3, R5. R9. MPLS IP, MPLS label range, range will be from 900 to 999. And what are the two interfaces which are into MPLS 3 by 2 and 3 by 3. Interface serial 3 by 2, MPLS IP, and the second interface is 3 by 3. Okay, so the MPLS configuration is finished. So we have configured the MPLS between R1, R2, R3, R4, R9, right? Okay, now let's find out uh, how the control plane uh, works into the MPLS VPN. Okay, let's, uh, let's configure one loop back here, 7.7.7 .7 and advertise uh, this particular loopback into BGP and we want this loopback to reach to our another site, right? Site number two for the same customer. Let's go to R7 and uh, create one loopback. Let's say interface loopback zero. Now let me check if you already do have the loopback. Yes, we have the loopback. So now let's configure or let's advertise it into BGP. A network 7.7.7.7 mask is slash 32 so IPPGP now customer A CE1 is advertising this particular route into BGP right so now when R1 will receive this update via BGP so it will receive it on on the interface with where we have configured the VRF right it will receive it on the uh, VRF aware interface so now what will happen to that uh, route is and th that we also discussed in our uh, previous lectures uh, I think it was uh, the lecture number six uh, which says uh, what is the use of RD and RT value so that there I also discussed what happened to a route when it receives at the PE. So let's quickly check. So uh, this is the uh, diagram that I'm going to use here. So this is CE1, it's the same one, right? We have R7, R1 and all that stuff. So now these are the RD value export import everything I have mentioned here. So when we advertise 7.7 .7 from here right slash 32 so pe1 receives right pe1 receives this particular uh, route into the 
we are aware on uh, interface and we are using the rd value and all so into the, the bgp is going to convert it into the vpn v4 route right so the update uh, will look like this so uh, the rd will uh, value will be appended with that so the rd value is 1 colon 7 and after that there will be the prefix information 7.7.7.7 slash 32 now what will be the next hook that uh, r1 or pe1 is going to use before it sends the information to the route reflector the route the next hook value will be 1.1.1 because we are forming the neighborship between the uh, devices or our uh, mpls vpn devices using their loopback so the, the loopback value at uh, pe1 is 1.1.1 right so here we are using 1.1.1 for pe2 we are using because it is router 4 4.4.4 4. 4. 4. 4. so now this is the vpn v4 route will be created and the next hope will be created apart from this a vpn label will be created right and we already discussed about the vpn label into our previous uh, video that is the uh, mpls label stack right so let's check what is the vpn label that is generated by the B uh, mp bgp at pe1 let's find out so we are at pe1 if we check show mpls forwarding table so for this particular uh, prefix that is received and you can see into the bracket is it is mentioned that v it means that it is the vpn label so the vpn uh, the local label uh, that pe1 generated it is the vpn label what is the value as 107 right so the vpn label that is generated is 107 okay now what else so also we are using the uh, route target export value 100 colon 100 so the route target value will also be sent along with the update right so the rt value is 100 colon 100 so this is our update let's put it like this so now this particular update because pe1 is having neighborship with the route reflector so it will send this particular information to our route reflector right and the route reflector is going to send this information to all the neighbor so what are the neighbors we have neighbor uh, it will send the information to r9 r3 and r4 or pe2 now because at r9 we are not using any import export value right we are not importing this particular uh, uh, rd value the rd value that we are receiving into the export is 100 colon 100 and we are not importing it at r9 and also at r3 we are not importing right we are importing the value 100 colon 100 at pe2 only into vrf customer a so that is why only pe2 is going to install this particular update and r9 and r3 are going to drop this particular uh, information right it is of no use for r9 and r3 so now let's let's do like this and this information will be accepted by pe2 only right now let's see it again we have advertised the subnet right from ce1 we advertise one prefix 7.7.7 .7 so pe1 received this particular subnet into the bgp process once pe1 receives uh, that particular prefix the vpn v4 uh, 
prefix is generated, right? The VP and V4 prefix, prefix is created. Uh, what is the VP and V4 prefix? It is the combination of the RD value plus the prefix. Also, uh, what will be there in the update that will be the next hope value. So the next hope value will be 1.1.1 .1 .1 because we are uh, using the loopback to create the neighborship. A VPN label will be generated by the multi-protocol BGP process, right? This portion also we already discussed in our previous section, uh, the MPLS label stack or why we need more than one label. Okay, so the VPN label will be created by the MPBGP and also the route target will be attached right into the update. So now, because PE1 is not having the uh, direct neighborship with PE2, so PE1 is going to send this particular update to route reflector. Now, a route reflector will send uh, this particular update to all the neighbors. So R1 is, RR is having neighborship with R3, R9, and with R4. But at R3 and R9, we are not importing this particular export value, 100 colon 100, right? That is why R3 is not going to accept it, this update. R9 is also not going to accept it. But at PE2, because we are using the import value, right, 100 colon 100, and the same we are receiving in as a export value into the update. That is why now PE2 is going to install this particular uh, prefix into the VRF table. And one more thing, I just want to uh, make it very clear that this VRF value or the VRF name is also locally significant. So instead of customer A here, you can also uh, say, let's say VRF name is CCIE. It doesn't matter, right? The only thing uh, that PE2 is going to check is the import value because at PE2, we can have multiple VRF. Let's say at uh, PE2, we are having one VRF customer A. The We also have another VRF. Let's say the VRF name is uh, CCNA. We have another VRF named CCNP. We have one more uh, VRF, let's say CCIE. So under the CCNA, we are also importing 100 colon 100. At, under CCNP also, we are importing 100 colon 100. And under CCIE, uh, this VRF, we are not importing the 100 colon 100. We are importing something else, let's say 500 colon 500. So once PE2 receives this information, it is going to check one by one all the VRFs. So first, let's say the very first VRF that it uh, checked is VRF customer A. Now it is going to uh, uh, verify if it is having the import value or not. So in the export value, it receives 100 colon 100. So it checked, okay, yes, in the VRF customer A, I have the import value, same import value. So I'm going to install this particular route or this particular prefix into my VRF table. Now it is going to verify its second VRF, which is CCNA. Into the CCNA VRF also, it finds out that it is importing the same value, 100 colon 100. So it is going to put that particular prefix into this VRF also, and CCNP VRF also, because here also it is importing 100 colon 100, but in CCI, it is not importing the 100 colon 100 value. So that is why in the CCI VRF, it is not going to install this particular prefix. So that is why uh, this VRF thing is also locally significant, but I do not see any reason why we uh, why we will use the different uh, VRF name for the same customer, right? To make the symmetry and uh, for our ease, we, are, uh, we, we, we generally use the same uh, VRF name for the same customer so that there will not be any confusion, right? So now, uh, if, we check this on our configuration also. Let's move to RR. I'm at R2, which is the route reflector. So BGP, VPN, V4, Unicast, all. Summary. So it is having the neighborship, right? Let's say show run section router. BGP. 
that is having neighborship with all. But still it is uh, not accepting the route. Let's try to clear the neighborship once. Clear BGP, VPN, V4, Unicast, star. So BGP, VPN, V4, Unicast, all. Okay, so let me check uh, what exactly is the problem. Okay, so there was some uh, problem with the route reflector. So I reloaded it and now it's working properly. So now if we check the route here, show PGP, VPN, V4, Unicast, all. So now you can see we are receiving the uh, seven subnet. So I also reloaded the BGP and also I think the MPLS label is also changed. So let's go to R1 and verify it. Show MPLS coding table. So the label is 109. So let's update it here also. Now in this topology, uh, let's make it 109 quickly. So this is 109 now instead of 107. So you can consider it 109. Here also it is 109. So now what we have seen is that uh, the information is sent to route reflector and then the route reflector sent the information to R3, R9 and the provider edge router 2. But R3 and R9 are not uh, going to install this information because we are not running any VRF or we are not importing the routes, right? So if we check at R3, you will not see anything here. Show BGP, VPN, V4, Unicast, all. There is no route present at R3 and R9. You can check the same thing with the R9 also. Now let's check at our provider edge router that is R4. So I'll go to R4 and we'll check show BGP VPN V4 in cast over. Right. So now you can see that uh, we are receiving the this particular subnet, right? 7 root 7 root 7. Right. So now if you open this particular route. Show BGP, VPN, V4, Unicast, all, and the subnet, right? Slash 32. Now you can see here, the label that uh, we are receiving is 109 at PE2, right? And who is the originator? The originator is 1.1.1, .1 right? So 1.1 uh, originated this information because this is the uh, behavior of the route reflector, right? It is not going to change the next hope IP. The next hope is still 1.1.1. .1 and you can see the cluster list that is the route reflector IP, which is our uh, route reflector 2.2.2. And you can also find out here the MPLS VPN label information. The MPLS VPN label is 109 right if you check the same information at r1 show mpls sorry show pgp vpn v4 unicost all and this information sorry r1 enter now you can see here so uh MPS label in so it is imposing the label right imposing the VPN label that is 109 it can be a little bit uh, confusing when you check this information like this because if you go to R4 R, at R4 you can see uh, the MPLS label information in it is showing no label and in the out direction it is showing 109 so Sometimes it is a bit confuse, confusing that this particular label, it is received from out direction or something, right? So, but it means, uh, what does it mean is that while PA2 is uh, replying 
for this particular prefix, it is going to put the VPN label into the out direction as 109. So now you can see that our information which started from CE1 is reached up to PE2. Right now, between PE2 and CE2, we are having the PGP. That is why PE2 is going to send the information to CE2. Now let's find out if CE2 received it or not. So CE2 is R5. Show IP BGP. CE2 did not receive the information, right? Let's do a debug IP BGP updates. Clear IP BGP star. Let's uh, ask for the information again from our P provider, right? Now you can see here it is saying that one update is received that is 7.7.7. .7 .7 from the PE router R4 denied due to AS path contains our own AS, right? Because this is a normal behavior of BGP route to avoid the load. So when this information started uh, from R7, it is advertised into uh, the MPLS backbone. So the AS path information will be carried out throughout, right? The BGP rule will be same. So into the update, the uh, AS number will be 65500. Then the uh, BGP AS number of uh, the ISP that will be included in that particular update that will be 500. And then it will be sent to R5. But when it reaches to R5, it finds out the same AS number 65500 in the update. That is why to avoid the loop, we do have the condition that if a router uh, running BGP receives something and in that uh, update, if it sees its own AS number that it is going to drop that information to over the loop, right? But now we must uh, need this uh, prefix, right? And also we know that there is no redundant link or something that can cause a loop. So now we, uh, we have two options. So the first option is I'll go to R5 so first option we can try at the customer edge router. So I am at the customer edge router. Uh, what I will do is I will type router BGP, my BGPS number. I will say when I receive any information from my neighbor and if it contain my own AS, then allow it. Okay. So this is the command that we can configure neighbor, neighbor IP, allow AS in. So now it is going to allow or it is going to bypass that particular rule to deny the information which contains its own AS number, okay? If I now say enter, and now you can see a revise route installing, right? Now it is installing the route. If we check show IP PGP. So our information, or you can see our, our control plane information is properly transferred or properly sent from one location to another, right? So our mission is completed. So we advertise one route 7.7.7 .7 from customer A side one. Now this particular prefix reached to the second location of customer, right? At site two. Now let's uh, advertise something from R5 also from site number two. I'm at R5. R5 also do have the loopback zero. Let's advertise it into BGP router BGP 65500 network. Mask. And done. Right. Let's check at PE1. PE1 is this one. So show PGP. VPN before the post all. Now you can see we are receiving that particular subnet. And what is the uh, label VPN label that uh, PE2 generated for this particular prefix? Let's find out. Uh, I'm at PE2 show MPLS forwarding table. So now you can see for 5.5.5, .5 the label that is generated is 407, right? And if we check with this command, show BGP VPNV for the cost all, and this then 
and to the in direction you will see the label number 407 okay right so in the in direction you can see the label number is 407 and at pe1 you will see this information into the out direction show bgp we can be full in cast and the information right so it is into the out direction the label number is 407 show mpls loading table okay so now this information uh, of the loop back, let's type it here as well. Loop back IP is 5.5.5 slash 32. So it is reached till our provider is router one. Now between provider is router one and uh, the CE one or R7, we do have the BGP. So now let's check at R7. Show IP BGP. Here we are not receiving the route because here we do uh, have the same problem right because the information is coming from the same as number so r7 is also not accepting it so for r5 what we uh, what uh, <clears throat> solution we have provided is on the customer edge router we have uh, configured the command allow ASN so that it, it is going to allow all the information even if it is crossing uh, its own AS number. So now we don't want any uh, configuration on the customer edge router. So now we do have one more uh, fix of this problem that we can apply uh, one command on the, onto the provider edge router. So if I met the provider edge router, let's go to provider edge router, show run section router BGP. Let's go to the BGP process for our customer. Address family IPv4, VRF, customer A. We will say is yes, neighbor, neighbor IP, and we will say AS yes, override. Now let's go back to our customer edge device that is R7. Clear IP BGP starting. Now again check this show IP BGP. Now you can see the information is here now 5.5.5 .5 and now you can see the AS number of R1 that is 500 is prepended, right? Or you can say it replaced the AS number uh, that it received right into the update with its own AS number, right? 500 and if we check at R5, you can see that it is receiving the update with its own AS number. Still, it is accepting it, right? Because we have run the command allow AS in this one. So this is the command which is uh, that we can configure at the customer edge device. And if we have some requirement like we don't need to uh, run any such command on the customer edge router, then we can also uh, run the AS override command command on the ISP device or the provider edge device. So this is how our uh, control plane information travel across our two locations. So in our next section, uh, we will discuss about the forwarding plane traffic, how this, uh, how the communication happens between the two prefixes of a customer between uh, the different locations. So that we will find out in our next section.